With comic book adaptations being all the rage these days, it's no wonder why the villains found in said adaptations are simultaneously becoming so popular. Now, we've definitely seen plenty of memorable supervillains brought to the big screen, but the ever-growing television and video game markets have allowed many lesser-known characters to leap off the page. One of the baddies who has benefited most from these mediums is the DC Comics villain, Deathstroke. This is exactly why I've decided to focus on him in this second edition of From Script to Screen. Originally created by Mark Wolfman and George Perez, Deathstroke first appeared in the New Teen Titans comic book series in 1980. His real name? Slade Wilson. Immensely skilled as both an assassin and a mercenary, Wilson's brutality and murderous deeds eventually earned him the title of the Terminator. Fuck you, asshole. Although he started out as an antagonist for the Teen Titans, Deathstroke has evolved over the years into a formidable nemesis for both Batman and the Green Arrow. Now, since I don't want this video to be about half an hour long, I obviously can't go into great detail about every single interpretation of this character. However, that might actually prove to be a blessing in some cases. For instance, I don't particularly care for the version in Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman, in which he had magnetic powers, or the rendition from Smallville, which made him out to be a thuggish old man. In all honesty, the first time that they got it right was in the Teen Titans animated series from 2003. Here, he's known by his first name, Slade. They apparently thought that Deathstroke was too intense for younger viewers. Yeah, because nothing else in this show was the least bit questionable. Anyway, Slade is a criminal mastermind. Instead of assassinating targets and fulfilling contracts, he commands other villains and concocts schemes to take over the city. Stay with me. While this straightforward and cliched objective may seem unfaithful to the source material, it actually works surprisingly well, to the point where he is easily the best villain in the show. They obviously play up his talents of manipulation and perception, but they do so without sacrificing the essence of the character. He's not at all shy about taking matters into his own hands. But what truly makes him memorable is the fact that he always knows exactly which buttons to push to get under his opponent's skin. Also, let's not forget Ron Perlman's excellent voice work. I understand your frustration, Robin. You hate losing as much as I do. One of the many qualities we have in common. He's cold, he's calculating, and he nearly always maintains his composure, speaking in that chilling monotone. I won't stop. Not now, not ever. I am the thing that keeps you up at night. The evil that haunts every dark corner of your mind. I will never rest. And neither will you. My friends say you're not real. I'm very real. I'll give you a second to recover from that. Given his impressive set of weapons and skills, Deathstroke soon made his way into the video game market. His first appearance in this medium, outside of the Teen Titans beat 'em up was in Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe in 2008. He's voiced by Patrick Seitz, who is serviceable but unremarkable. You should have paid up sooner. You'd still have a head. He's got the edge and the attitude down, but he sounds a little too young and inexperienced. You don't really feel like he could be the master manipulator. He seems like a hitman and not much more. The company's successor, NetherRealm Studios, was more on target with Injustice Gods Among Us in 2013. Here, the Deathstroke from an alternate dimension works with our world's heroes to stop a totalitarian version of Superman. J.G. Hertzler voices the character, and you can tell by his gruff and tough personality that he's been around a while and knows his way around in a combat situation. First rule of warfare, take out command and control. This satellite's the key to Superman's regime. Damn it, you jeopardized the entire mission. Superman's my priority, not your Batman. This take is perfectly fine and fits the interpretation of the character that they were going for, but it seems like the more seasoned version loses some of the intensity and edge of the younger versions. Yeah, I know, this one's too young, this one's too old, make up your mind and stop nitpicking. Let me clarify. This is personal preference, and not by any means a strike against Hertzler's performance. It's sort of like deciding which version of Batman you prefer. 
The older incarnation from The Dark Knight Returns is interesting, well acted, and works for that type of story. However, I personally like Batman more when he's in his prime. I think that more stories can be crafted around that. Similarly, while this Deathstroke works in the context of this game and is still true to the essence of the character, I just like him better at a different stage in his life. The character was pushed further into the spotlight with Batman Arkham Origins the same year. On top of being one of the main attractions in the game's cinematic trailer, Deathstroke was a playable character as a pre-order bonus. While that was oh so satisfying, the character didn't actually have a prominent role in the story. When Black Mask puts a bounty on Batman's head, Deathstroke is one of the eight world-class assassins who try and collect. That sounds fun, right? In reality, you fight him once and he's out of the picture. At least Mark Rolston makes the most of what little he's given in voicing the character. His interpretation is very relaxed and sarcastic. He's clearly confident in his abilities, which shows in Rolston's understated performance. Apparently the Joker's afraid of me. Wouldn't let me out. And for good reason. I don't like having my time wasted. You should have known trying to kill me was a waste of your time. <laughs> well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Not unless someone else puts up 50 million bucks. Again, this works for the character, but there's not quite enough material or risks here to help this version stand out from the rest. While he was making appearances in video games, this assassin was also starting to pop up on TV again with a brief appearance in Young Justice. Voicing him is Wentworth Miller, who seems to age at the rate of an elf, or Keanu Reeves. I would go in-depth about his portrayal, but he has the same problem as Rolston in that he shows up for one episode before being replaced by Fred Tattashore. So you calling for help like that just pushes up the timetable. Now I can't savor the battle. All I can say is that he's kind of smarmy and articulate but for the most part, he comes across as generic bad guy number five. At least he fares better on The Flash. Speaking of TV stars, Thomas Gibson of Criminal Minds fame voices the character in the animated movie Son of Batman. Now, I'm not exactly familiar with Gibson as an actor since I don't watch Criminal Minds, but I do know this. He is distractingly miscast as this character. I should congratulate you for getting this far, but that would be like applauding a suicide. You are such an arrogant little brat. So entitled. So bloodthirsty. So easy to manipulate. I brought you here for one simple reason. To kill you. Goodbye, boy. He sounds like a pencil pusher who's trying to be menacing. It seems like they were trying to go for the same articulated and chilling type of voice that Ron Perlman utilized, but it just doesn't work. I suppose part of that can be attributed to the way the character was written. In this story, Deathstroke comes off as a bully who tries to off a little kid because he wanted to be in the League of Assassins. Honestly, he's more petty than he is threatening. True, Slade was trying to kill a bunch of kids in Teen Titans, but they were his only obstacle, not overshadowed by other superheroes. Here, he spends all of his time trying to snuff out Damien when there are clearly bigger fish to fry. Here we are, years after Teen Titans ended, we have seen numerous different portrayals of Deathstroke, but none of them can rival the one from a children's cartoon show. Is there no one left? They're calling you Deathstroke. It's a bit flamboyant. I like it. Oh. Yeah. Who oh, I tried to let go of the island. But it's still got a hold on me. And of that hood that you wear every night is any indication. It's still got a hold of you, kid. Now this is what I'm talking about. Manu Bennett's version of the character on Arrow is not only the best interpretation since Ron Perlman, but it just might be the best version ever put on screen. The show focuses on Oliver Queen, both in the present day during his exploits as the Green Arrow and in flashbacks detailing his time stranded on an island. Also stranded on said island is Slade Wilson, a former member of the Australian Secret Intelligence Service who trains and eventually befriends Oliver. However, sure enough, circumstances cause them to have a little falling out. 
which results in Slade invading his friend's city and vowing to take away everything that he cares about. Now, first of all, this is by far the most fleshed out version of Deathstroke that we've gotten. The writers treat him like many of the other interesting characters on the show, allowing us to get to know the man first before he dons the costume. Letting Oliver and Slade's brotherly friendship develop over the first season makes it all the more compelling when it comes crashing down in season two. The conflict is much more personal than if they just wrote him in as a villain of the week. In addition, Manu Bennett gives such a passionate performance that it's hard not to be completely drawn in to everything he's saying. I also like the Batman-esque dual identity that he puts on. Sometimes he's a charming and charismatic businessman. You know, when I look at your mother, I think about everything that you went through after the quake. All I can say is, you and I have something in common. What's that? I know how difficult it is to pick yourself back up when other people have ridden you off. While other times he intimidates with vengeful intensity. Death would be a release from this life, and his sentence is yet to be carried out. I am going to tear everything he cares about away from him. Destroy those who choose to follow him. Corrupt those he loves. Once he has lost everyone and everything he values, I will drive an arrow through his eye. Not only is Deathstroke the best and most frightening villain this show has had thus far, which is saying something, but he's my favorite character in the series. You might be wondering, do I prefer the Teen Titans version or the Arrow version? Honestly, I just can't pick one. Comparing Ron Perlman to Manu Bennett is like trying to choose between Mark Hamill's traditional Joker... No, oh, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> ...and Heath Ledger's unhinged anarchist Joker. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. Both renditions are radically different from one another, but they're each perfect in their own way. That's generally how I feel about these two interpretations. Instead of worrying about which one is better, I'm just glad that we have both of them to enjoy.